Hi, in this video, I would talk about regulatory T cells. Now, regulatory T cells are one of the cousins of CD4 positive T helper cells. In this video, I would first talk about T regulatory cell development, then how T regulatory cell identity and the maintenance of the T regulatory cell identity happens. Second, then I would talk about T regulatory cell function. Now, first of all, to define the role of T regulatory cell in immune system, I would say T regulatory cell maintain the homeostasis of immune response. So the balance between inflammatory and anti-inflammatory response is maintained by T regulatory cells because they're the principal immune suppressor cell. In absence of T regulatory cell, the balance trip over to an inflammatory response. This increases the chance of severe inflammation and also increases the risk of autoimmune disorders, which could be pretty dangerous for our human body. Now let's take a look at how the T regulatory cell develops. Just like normal T cell and B cell, the development starts from the bone marrow, where hematopoietic pluripotent stem cell give rise to lymphoid progenitor. And the lymphoid progenitor in turn give rise to T cell precursor. T cell precursor migrate to the thymus and inside the thymus there are sequential stages of T cell development. At the end the immature T cells which learn to recognize peptides loaded on MHC class 2 molecules start expressing CD4 plus co-receptor and down regulates expressing and down regulates CD8 co-receptor and these CD8 positive T cells become T helper cells. Among these CD8 positive, CD4 positive T cells, some of them becomes T regulatory cells. Though the mechanism of how these, some pool of these CD4 positive cells become T regulatory cells is not clear, but there are some insights to it. Now, it's a million dollar question that how some CD4 T cells become T regulatory cells. So what is so different about T regulatory cells? It turns out that apart from TCR and T cell receptor and CD4 co-receptor, T regulatory cell expresses high levels of interleukin-2 receptor alpha chain. Also, it expresses the transcription factor of 4 k form family FOXP3 and they maintain the high level of this transcription factor level. Now, FOXP3 is the lineage marker for these T regulatory cell. And FOXP3 is known as the master regulator, which converts a CD4 positive T cell to a T regulatory cell like FIT. It has been seen that FOXP deletion in the germline ultimately lead to improper development of the T regulatory cell and increases the probability of autoimmune disorders. On the other hand side, the opposite is true. Now, if you overexpect for, for FOXP3 in a CD8 positive T cell, then it would give rise to a T regulatory cell-like character and start expressing interleukin 10, IL-10. Now, scientists think apart from this genetic predisposition, there could be other epigenetic mechanisms which can lead to T regulatory cell specification. A recent study has shown that a very small portion in the DNA which is present in all the T cells, which are generally methylated, are found to be unmethylated or demethylated in case of T regulatory cells. That means they are accessible to many transcription factors. So a lot of transcriptional programs that is happening in the T regulatory cells could be very different from a normal CD4 positive T cell. Now FOXP3 gene contains several introns and there are several evolutionary conserved non-coding sequences present in these introns and those are found to be enhancer. One of them is CNS2 which is a enhancer sequence which maintains the high level of FOXP throughout its lifetime, throughout the li lifetime of a T regulatory cell. Now the question is once a T regulatory cell becomes a T regulatory cell, how its identity is maintained, how it doesn't switch to its earlier precursor form. So how the identity is maintained. It has been seen 
when the CD4 positive cells switch into CD4 positive T reg cell, then there is a high expression of FOXP3 which is maintained throughout its lifetime. So FOXP3 expression, a high level of FOXP3 expression could be the key to this question. Now maintenance of the T cell regul identity depends upon signals from TCR, signals from interleukin 2, signals from TGF beta. All these things leads to higher level of FOXP3 in the T regulatory cell. And all these things give rise to our T regulatory cell fate. Now T regulatory cell has important anti-inflammatory function. So here is a macrophage. Now macrophage can generally secrete pro-inflammatory cytokines such as IL-1, IL-6. Now T regulatory cell engage with macrophage and prevent them for secreting these cytokines. In this example, macrophage can also regulate other and help activation of other CD4 positive T cells and thereby activation of other immune components. But T regulatory cell interacts with the macrophage and thereby preventing the macrophage from activating another T CD4 positive T cell. Also, the T regulatory cell can directly compete with CD4 positive T cell for interleukin 2. Now, interleukin 2 or IL2 is important for development of both a CD4 positive T cell and also a T regulatory cell. Now, if there is a scarcity of IL2, then CD4 positive T cells won't be developed that much. Also, directly, the T regulatory cell can secrete TGF beta and IL-10. Now, interleukin-10 is a prevalent immune suppressor cytokine that can act on CD4 T cell and other inflammatory mediators to check down inflammation. Also, by using perforin and granzyme mediated pathway, a T regulatory cell can cause destruction of T uh, helper cells. Now, here we would discuss that how T regulatory cell suppress a macrophage or other antigen presenting cells function. First of all, they secrete IL-10 which directly act on uh, the macrophages or other antigen presenting cell. Otherwise, they have an inhibitory receptor known as CTLA-4 which interacts with CD80 or 86 and ultimately give rise to a signal to the nucleus which prevents the expression of several pro-inflammatory cytokines. And thereby, in, thereby, the inflammatory response is reduced. Now, T cell also play a very important role in preventing autoimmune disorders. Now, non-obese diabetic mice is a model for autoimmune diabetic mod or autoimmune diabetic disorder. Now, if these mice are this, these mice are generally prone to develop autoimmune diabetes. Now, if these mouse are infected with T regulatory cell, then the onset of diabetes is really delayed. That means T regulatory cell can prevent the early onset of several autoimmune disease by providing its anti-inflammatory response. So this concludes the video on this topic. If you like my video, give it a quick thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Thank you.